welcome back to another episode of the Elise Yeezy Show. I'm your host, Elise Yeezy, and this week I am joined by, who should I say first? Rachel Oates. Hi. And Kieran. Hi. Don't know why I dropped my voice like that. <laughs> yeah, my um, voice isn't that deep, that's for sure. Hi. Very masculine. Hello. <laughs> How's everyone being? What's everyone been up to? What's going on? Uh, I'm good, yeah. I'm mostly excited to finish my hospitality job this week. <laughs> that is probably the most exciting thing in my life at the moment, whatever you, that tells you. Are you me. part of the great like work walkout where everyone's just leaving their jobs because they've had enough? Yeah, <laughs> except oh I've had enough for so long. <laughs> I've tried to quit from there like four times already. <laughs> it's like a running joke. To be fair, that's what I did four years ago. And then I got started on YouTube. It's like, best decision ever. I rage quit one morning. It was amazing. I'm just going to copy you, I think. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Just turn up one Monday morning and be like, oh, I'm not coming Give back. Give me a step by step. <laughs> also, just like your daily, what you do each day. And I'll just follow that exactly. Okay, yeah. Wake up at 1pm, <laughs> cry for an hour, fret about the future. How did Where... you know? <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, how are you describing my day? <laughs> that's literally what I did too, though. I rage quit yeah. my long-term job long-term mm. three years but in london that's a long time to that stay is a long time yeah. thank you mm. if you're i mean if you're not in finance whatever <laughs> sure sure yeah just rage quit one day because i'd had enough yeah. yeah that is the thing like this job is probably the longest commitment i've ever had because i've been there for like three or four years or something and really given you a ring yeah yet? yeah it's been like my most I consistent thing in my life i don't think you'd been there for that long yeah unfortunately. there would have been so many times that i would have walked past mm -hmm. And we'd have been near each other, but not known each other. Oh, wow. Ooh. Wow, what a mind if, fuck. I hate to think, but we were supposed to meet exactly at that time. Thank God <laughs> I wanted to be Outside of Tesco's, it's so unbrand. <laughs> it really is, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to quit your job and be anti-work because you've had enough of the system. Good for you, sure, revolution, yeah. revolution. What have you been up to? Anything um, good? Watched anything? Seen anything? Oh, God. I'm reading about sea shanties at the minute. That's exciting. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited about this. I'm doing a whole video on it. And mm. I'm going to like talk about the history of sea shanties and where they came from. And then like look at a few sea shanties. And I've got a guy who's going to record a sea shanty for me and sing it on the video. It's wow, great. Wow, that's awesome. I know, I'm really excited. Yeah, I love that. That's my life. They're so catchy. <laughs> that's the point. Because uh, like in general, first <laughs> sort of seeing a sea shanty, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I like that. But <laughs> after, they, after they're going yeah. for a little while, I'm like, um, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you do get into it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so I'll look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. It just I'm... makes me think of like Lazy Town. <laughs> the, the pirate song from Lazy Town. Lazy Town was a good show. Not you knowing Lazy Town lore. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> Watch Lazy Town as an adult because. I don't think I know the pirate one. They sing about like, you are a pirate I don't or something. I know any Ooh. of them. <laughs> so I, I like the Cook It By The Book one. That is my favorite. Cook It By The Book. Yeah. And then they have that remix with that guy who's always I yelling. I adore that. Right? Yes. Do you yep. not know about this? No, I'm oh, so younger sorry. Younger generation. Oh. Christ, how can you not know your lazy town lore? I, I, know. Is I that wake up every morning and put the rap remix of Cook It By The Book on and it okay. gets me hyped for the day. <laughs> I will look into that, yeah. <laughs> Another addition to the daily yeah. life of YouTuber schedule. Yeah. Wake up, listen to that little jo I think it's little John Learning remix, so much. Right? Right? Yeah. Learning like so that. much right now. <laughs> this is the lifestyle I want. That's good though. Picking she mm -hmm. she sh she oh, I, I know. She, she found she shells. It, she it's, found she shells. It's actually really hard for me because I do have like a little bit of a lisp. So anything with s's is really tough. So doing a video on sea shanties is it's the worst thing I could have done. It's, how how did you pick sea shanties in the first place? Was um, it just do you just sometimes come across a topic and think, oh, I like that. I'll just borrow into yeah, it and I just, I just share a, what I learn. Found a book in Waterstones and I bought it and found it interesting and now I'm making a video. Mm. Oh, great, curious yeah. mind. Just, Do you know what? This life. is how lame of a kid I was, right? <laughs> I used to skip school, like mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. And what I used to do when I was skipping school is I used to go to Waterstones and read comics. Oh my God, that's the dream. <laughs> how is that lame? That's oh, well cool. I love that. Going to a bookshop when you're yeah. skipping school. Is that yeah. cool, is it? Yeah, that's okay. sick. I love I'm bookshops. Cool. I didn't know that. Honestly, I'd rather be anywhere than school. But if I'd had a choice, yeah, I'd have gone to a bookshop. Mm. Definitely. Okay, does, anyone, does anyone remember about... Um, this guy that was in the news because you know the water stones in Trafalgar Square he uh, accidentally got locked in overnight <gasps> oh, and I remember this and instead of just shutting up and just yeah. enjoying reading all night or whatever he mm. started tweeting and then in the, when he got let out he said to the news people I thought I was gonna die <laughs> <laughs> one night why in a <laughs> I 
don't know. It seems bloody dramatic. The, do they sell um? Do they sell snacks in Waterstones? I'm sure you could go like twelve yeah. hours. Yeah. They probably got like naked bars in there or something. You could <laughs> munch on. You don't need to eat for like twelve. Come on, twelve hours. You'd, you'd sleep for you like eight get of peckish, it. Peckish though. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to sleep if I was trapped in a Waterstone. <laughs> I wouldn't, but it would be the excitement of like all oh, these books. Yeah, they've got some nice like soft couch, not couches, but you know places you yeah. can sit that are nice and soft. Comfy you chairs. Get a view of Trafalgar Square. Imagine in the morning they're like, right, which books do you, did you read? Because you need to pay for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> well, I've done something exciting this week. Oh yeah. No. Oh, just... yeah. <laughs> See, I got your hopes up and then I smashed them. I finished my Fifty Shades of Grey part two video script. <gasps> that I filmed, is very exciting. I filmed an hour of it last night and then I got fed up after an hour. So I <laughs> shut the camera off angrily because it was exhausting. It's, I think that's reasonable. It's actually, uh, it gets a lot worse. Is this the second book or the first book still? Uh, the first book, but part two of it. Because oh, I could only, okay, yeah. I only went up to chapter 15 in the first part because it was just, I couldn't, it, it was awful. I couldn't yeah. deal with it. Mm. And the second part, it has gotten worse. In fact, like I'm getting kind of a little bit mean. Okay. <laughs> there is a bit, and I've already yeah. said it. I'm going to have to edit like the bit out because I say it towards the end and I think I should not say it so much in the video. But I fully just <laughs> say to the camera, I hate you, E.L. James. <laughs> Like I, you know, because usually I'll be like, they're probably a nice person, yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah. No, no, I don't. Like I hate you because you've told millions of women that stalking and possessive behaviour and physical abuse, physical abuse, ignoring mm -hmm. of boundaries mm -hmm. is sexy behaviour. There are bits yeah. when they're talking about the hard limits, the soft limits of like their BDSM list. Yeah, and she'll say mm -hmm. like, he wants to do anal. Right. And she's like, oh, I, I, no, but she doesn't say no directly. She goes, oh, I don't think so. I'm not interested in that. Mm. And he's like, well, that's a shame because I want to claim your ass. We'll work up to it anyway, blah, blah. And it's like, so he's heard her say mm. she doesn't want to do it. And he's like, forget about that because I want to. Mm. And we're told that this is just domineering and sexy. And also like Christian Grey's um, dominating sort of, it's, it, I don't even want to call it kink because he's just abusive. Mm -hmm. He's just physically his, abusive his to her. Yeah. Yeah, his dominating behaviour. His dominating behaviour uh, comes from, of course, because he had a troubled childhood. Mm -hmm. You know. Because no was... one can possibly like BDSM without trauma. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say as well, I feel like it's also just really hurtful to people that actually do participate in like healthy BDSM. Mm -hmm. Because it's just not like a good representation of what that should be. It's a complete misrepresentation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's... It's not even really BDSM because mm. she doesn't like pain. She doesn't enjoy mm. being hurt. And the, the climax of the book, oh, it's just she wants to find out like what's the hardest thing because because he wants to do it. He wants to be able to hurt her. Mm. He's mm -hmm. like, I need to be able to do this. So she's like, okay, well, let's try it. And I want to see like how bad it'll be. And so he like whips over the belt six times. This is right at the end. Yeah. And she's like crying whilst he's doing it, but she's not giving in because she's like just being stupid, I suppose. Um, any good Dom in that in that scenario would mm -hmm. have turned around and been like noticed two, two whips in. <laughs> Hey, you're not enjoying this. Are you okay? Yeah. But like, he would probably get off by like technicality of, oh, she didn't use a safe word. She's never mm. been in these positions where she's had to use safe words anyway. Mm -hmm. She's never, she'd never had sex before she'd met him. Yeah. You know, and suddenly she's in like the situation where she's getting hurt. Like there's adrenaline going for her body. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like shocked at the same time. She's hating it and a bit of her is hating him. Any good dom would stop and be like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Because she doesn't like pain and he's hitting her with a belt as hard as he can. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's infuriating. That, that's another thing I hate about the book, though. It's like, because he's clearly had other partners before, and he's clearly been with other women who have been into the BDSM thing. And he's very, like, dismissive of them. And he's like, well, if they like it, if they're sexual women, if they're sexually, like, in control and they like it, he's not interested in them. He likes, what's her name, Anastasia? Anna. Mm. Uh, yeah, because she's a virgin and because she's pure and because he can corrupt her and he can, like, make her his own. It's so controlling. And it's, like, this horrible message to be sending to the women of, like, oh, well, men won't actually want to be with you and in a relationship with you unless you're pure and, like, don't enjoy sex. I was going to say, why <laughs> wouldn't you just find someone that's, like, yeah. also into what you're into? Yeah. Why would you want to be with someone that's not into it 
Oh, this is the thing, see? So he's had lots of partners before mm. and they've a lot of them have ended up wanting more and he's never wanted to give someone more until he met Anna. Because, of course, it's down to a woman to change a man and make mm. a man better. Mm. That's yeah. the function of them, obviously. It's all we're good for, really. Yeah, just better in men's behaviour. <laughs> yeah, I think that's also an issue is like the juxtaposition of like the committed relationship and the BDSM lifestyle because they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. I don't know why I'm talking like I'm an expert on, <laughs> on BDSM relationships. Go on, but... in your personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have just absorbed things from osmosis about BDSM and Fifty Shades of Grey. But like, yeah, it's like, oh, you're a BDSM guy, but I can change him and fix him into being able to be like a committed person where if they were in a healthy relationship that incorporated bdsm you know those two things would meld together also considering she does not like pain hmm. he's like not even subtly he uses threats of violence against her when they're not even in that dynamic for example hmm. uh she hangs out with this dude that he feels threatened by because the dude tried the dude tried to kiss her but it was assault <laughs> because she was saying no and he was trying to mm. but christian doesn't hate know. her hate jose because of that mm. he hates jose just because it's another man who fancies anna not the fact mm. that he's an assaulter it, ugh, so annoying and he finds out that they hung out together and then he's being like i'm so angry like my palm is twitching and she gets she, there are several times where she's scared because he spanked her once and she didn't enjoy it she didn't mm. like it she doesn't like being hurt um, and there's several moments where she's worried about like, and she says, please don't hit me to him. And it's like, um, this has been sold as no, this is just, it's not, that's not BDSM. BDSM is not like, if you are on the side of liking to receive pain, it's not, oh, you, you make a, some sort of mistake in a relationship and then the guy can turn around and can hit you and mm -hmm. take his anger out on you. That's just abuse. Yeah. Mm. Like it's. It infuriates me and I hate ELJs. <laughs> like, mm. as a, like, sorry, as a person. Like, I'm not even sorry. Mm. Why am I saying so? I'm trying to, like, soften it? Yeah. No, because it's just trash and it got sold to millions of... Because I remember... I remember when I found out about it because, like, I think... It, it was kind of like the, the mum sort of crowd were all reading it, mm. you know? And they think it's, like, genuinely... Oh, it's... I'm pretty sure my nan had it. <laughs> <laughs> Legend. Yeah, for whatever reason that might be. <laughs> Um, I, I, and that only just came back to my memory as well. I think that was like really you repressed. repressed. It. I don't know. Maybe watch it back if you can see my eyes as like <laughs> as that memory bubbles back up to the surface. But yeah, very strange, isn't it? It's infuriating. And the research just was not done by E. L. James. I no. feel. No. I'm yeah. very curious as to like why she wrote that book. Like, you'd assume it's kind of like some sort of like maybe like a fantasy of hers or like a self-insert kind of thing. Mm. But why would she want to write about herself as a victim of abuse and romanticize it? I don't understand that. So I'm mm. like thinking, is this some kind of like sort of Stockholm syndrome where that's happened to her and now she's trying to justify it by being like, oh, well, it wasn't abuse. It was romantic. I'm not sure. I think there are times where she just genuinely doesn't know what she's actually writing because she's mm. not a, she's not a good writer it's not good it's riddled mm. with cliches there's <laughs> yeah. there's there's continuity errors within five lines of each other mm. like there's this bit where um he he grabs her elbow because mm. he's talking to her and then suddenly it's so it's like he grabbed my elbow a few lines of dialogue and then it's he released my hand to grab my elbow and i was like did no one fucking proofread this are you joking this is within six lines of each other yeah just makes me mad the whole thing makes me mad so mm. i've been getting a heart attack over that this week <laughs> rage induced that's fair my favorite bit was the bit that you sent me about the icarus thing like, <laughs> i just found that so funny so anna keeps um she keeps calling herself icarus flying too close because she, she's flying too close yeah. to the sun and she's gonna oh no fall to the sea somehow and mm. there's a bit where they go um like not hang gliding they go gliding in a plane yeah. together and then there's this bit where she says you know oh we're flying close to the sun icarus i'm icarus we're, we're flying close to the sun and it's like you could have just literally said we fly like we were flying close to the sun yeah that's it and then because mm -hmm. you've mentioned it once being like icarus yeah you would infer that you'd get the subtext mm -hmm. you'd be like oh that's a theme yeah. it's not a theme if you're like trying to ram it inside my brain so my aggressively fa my favorite thing about it was how like in character it was because it was like <laughs> we as we fly close to the sun icarus <laughs> the realization hit me it's like there's zero subtlety. <laughs> the 
there's no As if that's like how all. people actually like react. It. Maybe they do. That's how I think. Too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just like Icarus. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it, there's zero subtlety with it because there's all these references to, I believe there's a book she likes, like Tess of the Durbaville, oh, yeah. something like that. And there's some You sort just of... made that title. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> Tess of the Durbaville? <laughs> Those made up words. <laughs> I don't know. There's um, always these bits yeah. where, like, they'll reference some sort of classical piece of <laughs> media or whatever. Like, there's even a bit where she's listening to some sort of, um, what's she called it? Sepharic, seraphic, like angelic choir, and they're they're singing okay. whilst he's like lightly slapping her bum a bit. But she actually enjoys Conscious. that because that's a little bit Divine. light. Yeah, and they're singing in Latin, and I'm like, this yeah. is the most pretentious <laughs> fucking fuck I've ever read in my life. Oh my they're singing gosh. in Latin, and then he tells her afterwards what they are and like what the the theme of it is and the theme. Uh, it's, they really punch you over the, like yeah. they like they kind of do the big bang theory like way of mm. exp- like, like you know big bang theory yeah. they'll explain the joke and they'll hold your awful hand awful show by the way awful absolutely awful absolutely 50 terrible. shades of grey is like the big bang theory of the liter- literacy world okay because she will say a theme mm. and then explain it to you repeat it several times then hold your hand yeah so you know I'm getting mad thinking of it yeah so I don't blame you move on swiftly mm-hmm. I don't want to think about the Big Bang Theory either, so... You know, there's kind of, like, this sort of gender-swapped version of it now. And it's called mm. Pretty Smart, and it's terrible. And it's, like, this, like, woman. And the premise is, she's, like, an absolute genius, and she moves to L.A. to be with her sister. And her sister's, like, an absolute idiot, and her roommates are all kind of, like, dumb idiots. But they're all really, really nice. And then you have, like, Emily... What's her name? Oz... Ozma or something like that I don't know and she's like meant to be this like genius woman who's like quite uptight and she's like they're like smarter than everyone else but she's not she's just like the most average person and every mm. so often she references like a classical book or something and you're like is this what they think a genius is <laughs> <laughs> someone that's read a book <laughs> yeah you watch it and you're like oh <laughs> and so I think it's meant to be like a reverse sort of big bang theory but it's mm. just as bad it's it's really awkward. At least with the Big Bang Theory, it's terrible, but they are actually intelligent. Sure. You know what I mean? Rather than just like an average person next to some really dumb people. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I could beat them in a quiz. <laughs> in, a little, in a trivia quiz. Yeah. <laughs> About Emma Day or something. Phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Oh, EastEnders are good. I'm good with EastEnders. EastEnders. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my guilty Decent. pleasure. Yeah. It's actually. Yeah, I absolutely you love it. I love EastEnders. Do you watch it every oh day? Oh my. <laughs> every week, yeah. I, I tend to like um, catch up on <laughs> iPlayer like once a week. Oh my God. I could tell you everything that's happening right now. It's really exciting. It's Phil Mitchell still in it. Yeah. Is he all right? I like I, him. He's, he's with Kat now, Kat Slater. Oh my They're God. They're a couple. Who was she with before? Yeah. Alfie. She was with Alfie for a while and like then they broke up and then they left for a while and then they came back and then Alfie left. It was a whole thing. And then she was with Kush for a while mm. and now she's with Phil Mitchell. Can't say it in Phil yeah. Mitchell. I How actually have a core fall. memory of EastEnders <laughs> and that's when they swapped the babies. That. <laughs> oh, that, was that is such uh, a, I don't Kat, even Kat watch Ronnie. EastEnders, yeah. but that is ingrained what? in my brain. Yeah. What? So I, I stopped These... watching EastEnders for that little period oh, when I was you? at uni. Yeah, so I kind of missed that, but I got back into it with the Who Killed Lucy Beale. Mm. That okay, was, that was two, two of the women in EastEnders yeah. had a baby at the same time. <laughs> One of the babies tragically died, yeah. and she sw- she took mm-hmm. the, she swapped the babies basically. Yeah. No, but, but Ronnie was yeah. like proper messed up because she'd been raped as a teenager by her dad and got pregnant, <gasps> and then had the baby, and then the baby was taken away from her, so she was like messed up over babies mm. anyway. And then she got, pr- then she got with Jack, and they were supposed to be getting married, but he cheated on her with her sister and got her sister pregnant. Um, and then Ronnie got pregnant with Jack's baby and lost the baby, I think. So then they like broke up for a little while and they finally got back together. And I think Ronnie had the baby with Jack and then it died. So she was really messed up. Mm. The she EastEnders a, law yeah. is... She had a lot of baby trauma. Yeah. But yeah. the thing I don't get about soaps and why I don't <laughs> watch them is if all this stuff is happening in this concentrated place where you've got like serial killers, <laughs> something's burning down every other month, all these like crazy events happening, just move. Like you would just move. <laughs> That's what they do you. when they leave. They're like, right, yeah, like, right I think I've had enough. <laughs> Like, what was that guy from Coronation Street? Todd or someone? He mm. just left. He, like, on the show, the character came out as gay and then yeah. he left or something. Oh, I know Todd. To- oh, I'm Todd, gay. Jason, um, <laughs> Sarah. They had their whole little, like, love triangle. That's, like, ingrained in my memory. That's one of my core memories from being a kid. I'm sick of love triangles. <laughs> 
And they're never even love. They're never even triangles. They always love like V's yeah. because oh. for a triangle, oh, no, no. Sorry, this it was needs to be everyone. Connected. This was yeah. like a love square. So Sarah oh and God. I know <laughs> Sarah and Todd were together, and they mm. were like each actually no, because Sarah's pregnant at this point. Sarah got pregnant when she was like thirteen, and she had a kid, and she was like, no one's ever gonna want me. But then Todd was like, I want you, and they got together, and she was his first, and then he was like, actually, I might be gay, and he cheated on her with another <sighs> guy, and so she then cheated on him with his brother. There you have it, folks. <laughs> Wait, what happened to little Ben? Didn't little Ben, right? He's the one He that, became he, a criminal. Oh, or something. yeah. Didn't he, <laughs> ben Mitchell's like a proper little gangster he a now. Psychopath? Didn't he kill Heather? Heather. No. He killed Heather when he was like two years old. Yes, he did. Because he like yeah. pushed her into some sort of like photo frame yeah. and she died. Pathetic. I didn't know she died. Yeah, she died. Heather, yeah, because then Shirley yeah. was going mental about rage. Like, they played she? George Michael at a funeral and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I know this? I'm so glad that for once it's like, it's you going on about nonsense. (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually so taken aback. I'm so happy about this. What is Shirley's damage? Why is she always so mad? Oh, she storms I, around I the square her. screaming. So Shirley. Oh. Awful highlights as well. So, so I love Shirley because she used to be, um, oh, what's the name in Bad Girls? Loved Bad Girls when I was a kid. That was amazing. That was like a soap style thing in like a women's okay. prison. It was wonderful. Oh, that sounds good. It was so mm. good. Um, so she, she was... She was a really iconic character in Bad Girls. Can't remember. Anyway, I mean, can't remember her name. So she um, was abused as a kid by her dad, not sexually like Ronnie, but just like physically abused, I think. And then she got pregnant at a really, really young age. And um, basically her parents forced her to raise her baby as her brother. So so her and Danny Dyer's character. <laughs> Kes <laughs> Motion's come back to life behind the camera, and just like in. eyes wide, like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so, so, so Mick Carter, Danny Dyer's character, who I adore, Danny Dyer. Um, d- really? Don't judge, yeah. You like that's this is fascinating. Inside the mind. This is Rachel a character Oates. study of Rachel Oates that we're doing. So right now. Yeah. You like Danny Dyer? Me. I think, did you see him on that <laughs> panel show where he was talking about aliens? He's like, oh, he had a massive, no. like, nut for I just, a head. I think, I think he's a little bit of a douchebag, but I just love him. I don't I know, know exactly why. what you mean. He's just, he's just fascinating to watch. That's valid. He's, yeah. he's wonderful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, he bought the Queen Vic with his wife, Linda. And then, like, Shirley was like, oh, blah, blah, I'm your sister, I'm here. Um, and here's your brother, Dean, as well. And then it all came out one time. Um, because Dean raped Mick's wife, Linda, and she got pregnant. Um, and But it didn't end up being his baby. It did end up being Mick's baby. But then Mick found out that Dean raped um, Linda, and he was, like, beating him up. And he's like, oh, I'm just your uncle. I can beat you up. And then Shirley goes, stop, he's your brother. And then it all comes out that, like, she was his mother, and she'd had to, like, raise him as a sibling, and it was really weird. Wait, 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 so wait, he's wait. allowed to beat him if he's his uncle, but Apparently. not his brother. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. I didn't wait, know so... that the rules were updated yeah. on that. So Danny Dyer's mother is Shirley. Yeah. The one who screamed over Heather, who yeah. got knocked the fuck out by a two-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And then the two-year-old went off to juvie and came back a whole different actor. Okay, that is no, actually he, the he worst was, way to die. He was like die. seven, I Killed think. Killed by a two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know give him like, some credit. <laughs> I need then, a family tree. If you could just oh, let's get a massive let's get a sheet of paper, <laughs> a nice tapestry. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it with like fine embroidered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, Linda's now just had another baby because she got pregnant with Max Branning's kid, and the Brannings are a whole other thing. That but bold Max, guy. Yeah, Max Branning's brother. Oh, uh, when he was Jack. having that affair with yeah. what's her Stacey. face? Well, Stacey. Oh, yeah. That was the juiciest, Wait, did, oh. juiciest did gossip. Stacey, but, did Stacey fall off the, or was she pushed? Who fell off the roof? That was Bradley. Bradley. That was um, That's Max's the son. son. Bradley Stacey's, got done so dirty. Yeah, in the, I don't even watch yeah. this show. Didn't, didn't they, do, they did that live, and then did they? Yeah, that was they a live did. They show, did. Yeah. And then one of the actors yeah. accidentally said like the other actor's actual name instead of yeah, their character they, name. It was it was Ian Beale's character, and Tanya comes in and she goes, "All right, Adam." <laughs> <laughs> so why were Acting. they trying to do it live? <laughs> why Why do I remember this? <laughs> I remember I hadn't seen EastEnders for years because I just don't watch normal TV. Went around my mum's Christmas Day a few years Mm. ago Mm. and they had this episode of EastEnders on so I watched it. (laughs) Me and like my sister's boyfriend who's like this, you know, this great big like bodybuilder type... wouldn't have thought he was the type to like watch EastEnders. Sure. But he was like, oh no, I, I love watching this show. <laughs> so good. Why is like, it like, like every Christmas something like really tragic? 
But, but, and it's just funny because like he was from a different country and yeah. he was like, oh no, when I first moved to England, I just watched EastEnders. And then, you know, like got more of like the English I learned lingo. about your culture. <laughs> no, literally. What the fuck is going oh, on I was, just, I, was just like, I was like, mate, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, but this episode of EastEnders yeah. that I was on, it was like an episode of, I don't know, The Wire or something. It was amazing. Yeah. I think it was the one where, um, where what's his name? Keanu? They took him out to... Oh my God, And then she was yes. like, you don't... That lady was like, you don't fuck with... Were they the Mitchells? Um, you don't fuck with us or... Because someone... So he, he had an affair with he Bill Mitchell. He had an Mitchell's. affair with Shannon. Uh, Shannon, it. Sharon even. That's it. Yeah. So Sharon used to be Sharon Watts and then became Sharon Mitchell. And then she married a whole bunch of other people. Um, and then she got back with Phil and then she got pregnant, but it was Keanu's baby. And Keanu was like 19 and she was like 50. Yeah. But what was really funny is that um, while they were having sex in the back of a taxi in the garage, because that's what they do apparently, um, Sharon accidentally like butt dialed uh, Louise, who's Phil's daughter. And she was like, I heard you. I know everything. And then Sharon goes, no, Keanu's my... Uh, personal trainer you just heard us working out yeah <laughs> and louise that's, actually believed it that's the excuse <laughs> I would use. although then keanu started keanu started sleeping with louise and got her pregnant so he got mother and stepdaughter pregnant at the same time oh my god hmm. yeah he said this is like the best TV where show are they finding all know. these babies to be in these shows <laughs> that sounds like a lot of babies there must be like 10 babies in these standards yeah. at any given time what? No wonder they all get swapped and <laughs> juggled. And you can remember who's exactly, the who's. Yeah. With the baby swapping <laughs> storyline, did that get rectified? Did they did they work I, out the babies had been swapped? I think so. Yeah, at yeah. some point. I, like, how I, did I they never resolve how, that? How would you though? Because like you know, like how would you be able to distinguish the babies? Because they all look pretty similar I, in the I first few days. I'm making don't they? this up, did, but didn't like the baby get ill or something and need like a blood. Mm transplant or a transfer or something and uh, then they did test okay. I, I might be making that up though mm. i don't know but it was something and but then... you know what i saw an article and i'm not sure if this was real but people were reacting to it like it was real and i it, i don't think it was like one of those fake news websites because i did check <laughs> and it was like this nurse on her deathbed ad admitted that she had swapped like thousands of babies throughout <gasps> her career well just for fun yeah <gasps> Well, did is you, that not mental? Did you hear about that doctor recently who, like, he's in a bunch of trouble because he'd been, like, searing his initials into people's yes, organs I as he was doing surgery? Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can, can, like, next episode that I come on, can I give you, like, a bunch of headlines and you have to tell me what their real stories are? Oh, my gosh, plots? that's That would be such a fun game. Yes. yes. 100%. But in light of that, well, <laughs> this is a segment that we're going to do about our favourite books mm -hmm. and then talk about mm -hmm. a book. We're starting a little book club, essentially. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun for all of us. <laughs> each month, well, we hope to get together mm -hmm. each month, we'll discuss the book. But first, maybe let's go through our favourite books that we've read recently. Mm -hmm. Who wants to take the floor? I can oh, go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. You're, yeah, you're, you're okay, excited cool. by this one. Fun. Probably because people are least interested in mine. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll start things off. This is my favourite book. Yeah, I'm doing show and tell. <laughs> what do they do? They hold it up to the camera. So it focuses properly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's called Wild and it's by Cheryl Strayed. And it's a memoir. And basically it's about this woman. She's 26 years old at the time and her mum dies from cancer. And she basically goes on this, like, it's, I think it's the longest hiking trail in America. And it is, uh, ha wait, how long is it? It's... Like 1,100 1, miles, 1,100 mm -hmm. mile hike. I personally have never done a do hike that of that easy. length. That's is, my, yeah, my toxic trait, thinking I would be able to do that, no problem. Is this the same woman who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, or am I making that up? I don't think so, but okay. it gets compared quite okay. a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she, and she's like a recovered, like drug addict, like heroin addict. Mm. And she just goes on this really long hike and she reflects on her life and it's like a lot of flashbacks and like themes of like forgiveness and grief. And it's just incredible. And it changed my life for six ninety nine. <laughs> so Decent. I would recommend everyone read it, yeah. Do you want to go on an eleven 1, hundred mile? Do you know hike what? Now? Yeah. So when I first read this, I think in my head I didn't quite grasp how far um, that was. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. distance of it. <laughs> um, not sure now, but I would, I would love to do it. Just so, because 
in the book, like you mm. really get to go th- all the way through mm. with her. And I would like to sort of like go through kind of in her footsteps, if that makes mm. sense. But the thing is, I saw the film first because there's a movie adaptation <laughs> of course there is. with Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> and it is, it's really good. And I'll often do that. If I watch a film, I'll go back and read the book if mm. I th- thought the film was really good. Um, so yeah, if, if you're not a big reader, check the movie out instead. <laughs> Because it's good. Or watch the episode of Gilmore Girls where Lorelai does it. Yeah. Doesn't she like quit halfway through though or something? She doesn't even go halfway through. She Is goes she there and then I don't even think she walks a mile. And then I... she rings up her mother and then just goes home. Oh. I remember there's that really funny bit where like she comes across like a whole bunch of other women. They're like, are you doing wild? I'm doing wild. Are you doing wild? <laughs> <laughs> that's it's crazy so that that's resurfaced. Because this is quite an old book, I think. Really? So that's interesting that it's being like referenced in yeah. current pop culture like that but yeah it is incredible <laughs> and i would love to do it but i'd have to find like a good hiking buddy I'll do it. should we just go i'll, go. I'll like walking be a good vlog won't it <laughs> <laughs> everything is monetizable yeah exactly yeah, why not? I can don't do anything much. for free absolutely not <laughs> hobbies what hobbies <laughs> how about you have you got any oh so- favorite book recently so it's not a recent one, but it's probably like one of my favorite books of all time. Mm. I was going to talk about The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. Mm. And it's so good. It's all about octopuses. So she's this woman and she looks to these animals and everything like mm. that. And she decides to get to know octopuses. So she starts going to this um, huge aquarium in America. And every week she would go in and just meet the octopuses and get to know them. And she got to know all of them personally and like their little personalities. And she'd like put a hand in the tank and like reach out and touch them. And she starts studying them and getting to know their behavior and like their habits. And you properly see like all the different little personalities of these octopuses coming out. And there's like one octopus who escapes from his tank and there's a big pan, well, her tank. And there's a big panic because everyone's like, no, we need to get her back in soon or she's going to like dehydrate and die. But like they were like, well, why she got out? Like, is she unhappy here? what's happening and they have to figure it out wow. um, and then she starts learning to scuba dive and she goes out into the wild and meets all these wild octopuses and like has these adventures with them which <laughs> sounds silly but it's like really beautiful and then it ends with this octopus that we've been following right from the beginning of the book who um we see like her life and her growing up because this takes place over years um and then we see her mating with, well, not see, but we hear about her mating with another octopus and mm-hmm. how that goes. And then she gets pregnant. And the thing about octopuses is when they give birth to their little eggs, their job from then on is making sure those eggs hatch and nothing else. So she stops eating. She stops going anywhere. Her entire role is to like protect these eggs and oxygen- oxygenate them constantly. And then the book ends. Setting unrealistic expectations for mothers everywhere. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Another reason I don't want to be a mother. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the book ends with this like really beautiful scene of like her little octopus babies all hatching and being born as she dies. And it's like for the author, it's like her losing her friend. And it's really, wow. really sad. It that, made, it, that sounds very intense. It made me cry so much. What was the amazing. motivation for her? Why octopus Why specifically? Not? They're oh, okay. wonderful. Yeah, that is great. <laughs> very they are very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they yeah. can get through really tight spaces, can't yeah. they? Basically, anything the size of their beak or bigger, they can get through. That's insane. So, mm. like, you can have like a giant octopus, but if its beak is like this big, mm. it will get through that gap. Skinny legend. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and they can like change colour to match their yeah. surroundings as well. Fascinating. Yeah. Definitely one of it's the coolest artworks. creatures, right. to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the book goes into the science of like how all that works and their nervous systems and everything. Mm. And it's just like but it's told in such a way that's like almost like a narrative, so you don't realise that you're learning as you go okay. on. It's really good. When you I said the it. soul of an octopus, mm-hmm. I was imagining like the soul of an octopus trapped inside a man's body or something. <laughs> and he's like walking around like, oh God, like what am I supposed to do? See, I feel like that's something you'd write. <laughs> there you go. There's a game actually that my boyfriend's been playing on the Switch where you're this octopus o- dad. dad. Yes. Oh my God, I love yes, octopus dad. dad. I, I have a so You pretended to be so a human, but you're like, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Is it? Because I've only ever played it on the PC mm. where you have like each key like controls the limbs you end up walking like this and you look really stupid i love it but i found it too difficult to control and everything was sticking onto me i was like fuck this i uninstalled it straight away once you get the hang of it it's so good and there's like all these different levels like one you're in a supermarket and you're like trying to pretend to be a human and you're like "Mm." okay that does sound good it's great (laughs) let's play incoming (laughs) so you're an octopus super fan i really love them yeah i get really annoyed with people like on my videos when i mention them and they're like oh so octopi do this i'm like it's octopuses actually it's actually because i thought it was octopi no it's octopuses (laughs) 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm choking. Just <laughs> getting that excited. <laughs> so we, I love octopuses. Um, I will choke for them. Why um, is it octopuses and not octopi? Because, octopi? because the root of the word is different. Oh. It's like Greek hmm. instead of Roman or the other way around or something like that. So technically, archaically, we can say octopodes if we want, but no one okay. really uses that anymore. I'm going to start. Yeah, the Octop- grammatically <laughs> correct one nowadays is octopuses. Okay. Octopuses. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't go, actually, it's octopi. <laughs> That'd like, be infuriating. Yeah. Like <laughs> that, that must be really annoying to get that comment a lot. That would annoy me. I'd probably yeah. I it's the one thing that I'm like a big stickler mm. on for some reason. Even when people like, I saw someone who made like an octopi pun. Like yeah. they're like, oh, what's an octopus's Actually, favorite it's food? It's octopi, and I was like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a boring old lady. <laughs> that only stands as a few things clar- I'm passionate about. I feel like you have about. to clarify the octopuses <laughs> thing a lot, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is the great thing about the soul of the octopus. Mm. Um, it's like one of the first things she talks about in the book. She's like, many people think blah, 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 octopi, but it's octopuses. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I love this woman already. <laughs> yeah. Like first page, she gets really into it. I'm like, yes. Perfect. <laughs> <She's> wonderful. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and what about you? God. I don't know because I feel like I feel like recently I've just done a video about you know the top reads that I had of 2021, mm. and then I just did a bookshelf tour thing. Yeah. And my favorite mm. book that I read recently is Project Hail Mary, but I feel like I've spoken about it a lot. Mm. I'm actually rereading Bridget Jones's diary at the moment. I don't oh, yeah. know why. I think I'm going through something. Okay. Because oh. I've been watching the old school, not old school, the original series Sex mm. and the City recently. Because I've been watching it just like that, and it yeah. blows. I am mm. asked to do videos on it. It sucks, and just like it's terrible. Do you know what I saw the other day? Like mm. this post about how the cast of Sex, uh, or not Sex and City. What's the what's and the new one? Like that. Yeah, the cast of that is younger than the cast of Golden Girls were when it started. Yeah, I saw that, which is terrifying, bit... isn't it? Yeah, but it's nice that like the way we view women and age has kind of changed, improved. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> well, you've not seen the show because oh. I should be talking about books here. No, let's just talk about <laughs> pop culture. Because, I mean, they're all 55 and they're acting like they're ger- geriatrics. Oh, God. <laughs> like Carrie has to go for hip surgery, which, mm. sure, it happens. But, and they've also, I think they've got Miranda wearing this strange uh, grey wig because mm. she doesn't have that type of hair in real life. And Steve's gone basically, mm. this, this means nothing unless you've seen the original show. Steve's gone basically like fully deaf and has, which does, does happen, but it's just the way okay, they kind of- But they're of, like, what do old people go through and just assign <laughs> one onto each character? They're putting like all the tropes- Broken hip, going deaf. <laughs> yeah, all the tropes in it. And these women are 55. Like mm. that's not- See, I might have to have hip surgery soon and that makes me feel really old. You can join the cast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start going gray as well and losing my hearing. <laughs> I've been rereading Bridget Jones's diary and I'm not exactly sure why. Because mm. I just feel like it's just in the mood for that kind of stuff. No, because yeah. I tried to read um, one of the recent Bridget Jones diaries. Like, she's 50, you know, and she, spoiler alert, just lost Mark Darcy, her husband. Um, and I was trying to read that. And just the way the diary entries were, she kept saying, like, Oh, I, abbreviating and simplifying the sentences too much, you know, being like, okay. uh, complaining about Twitter, for example, being like, mm-hmm. is rubbish, is this, is like, is rubbish, mm-hmm. not enjoying, is talking really like simply. Mm-hmm. And I was like, surely the original Bridget Jones's mm-hmm. diary didn't read, I don't remember it. So I've been rereading it and it's not like that at all. It's strange how mm-hmm. she's kind of like simplified that it's a bit weird. Mm-hmm. But Bridget Jones, I mean, she starts off like every diary entry uh, talking about her weight and then mm-hmm. being like V good or V bad or whatever, eating like 5,000 calories, V bad or whatever. She's only about nine stone. She's oh only goodness. nine stone. And, she, yeah. and like people reference yeah. her in the book it- itself mm. being like, oh, you know, you've got a big ass. It's mm-hmm. like, she's nine stone. Mm. Yeah. That's I'm not nine stone. Interesting. That's, yeah. And there's constant allusions to. Um, drinking as well mm. like i mean in the recent one that i was reading mm. she's always drinking in this one she's always drinking because mm. i've been watching sex and the city they're always drinking <laughs> um because i've been watching that i've been reading also the carrie diaries which is like when she's in new york mm. and she's 18 or whatever I also saw always TV drinking show of that i actually really enjoyed it i thought it was okay i've never seen it i quite liked it i mean i knew nothing mm. about sex and the city so i didn't know the characters at all i was just like it's quite bright it's fun i'll watch this it's okay Oh, there you go. Sometimes yeah. that is one of the things that makes me sad that I don't drink is because I do have some kind of like image of wanting to be like a suburban mm. mum with a glass of wine, like <laughs> on my marble like kitchen island after like a long hard day of like being a girl boss or whatever, you know? 
oh wow it yeah it triggers me like yeah. and i watch it and i'm like i'm definitely going but i know i'm not going to do anything mm. i'm just sort of like mm. triggering my, myself because fun I look look how much fun they're all having <laughs> but actually Kristen davis who plays charlotte in sex and mm. city um she's completely teetotal has been since she was in her 20s because mm -hmm. she had a problem Congrats. with it That's so fun. it feels like you've been sold a bit of a lie when you're mm -hmm. seeing her drunk and they're drinking mm -hmm. all the time and yeah usually it is usually it's not actually that um glamorous I know, but it's in all of the TV shows. It's actually yeah. quite annoying. Like I, I do get things like when I see like people like drinking and stuff on TV, I get like a little bit like, oh, well, I, I kind of fancy going out and having a drink now. And yeah. I stop and think about it. I'm like, no, it's not the alcohol I'm craving. It's mm. company. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That's I, fair. Yeah, and then I realise that like, no, I'm not jealous of them drinking there. I'm mm. jealous of like you know the, the friendship and them having company and mm. stuff because like i could easily like open a bottle of wine at home and just have a glass and it, it doesn't like satisfy me like i realize that what i'm craving it's in the, the situation yeah. yeah it's like friends i'm jealous of the drinking mm. you i'm <laughs> jealous of the drinking too cool 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 cool, cool. oh they get yeah. absolutely blotto mm. makes other people more interesting you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's i don't know why people find it funny when i say that it's bloody <laughs> true like being on drugs makes other people so much more interesting <laughs> just saying guys yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been. That's what I've been doing. So Bridget Jones Diary. That's your submission. I I think because um, I mean I did the Bill Gates recommended books video mm. where I read Project Hail Mary and that's yeah. my favorite of the lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Hamnet, which I couldn't stand, didn't even finish it. Really? And it was so fucking boring. Uh, oh, I heard quite good things about it, but. Yeah, but I feel like people it's just jack that. each other off all the time in the literary world. <laughs> because it was just so boring. It was like I was 70 mm. pages in. And I was like, literally nothing has happened. <laughs> literally nothing has happened. There's some boy. I didn't, I mean, I knew, right. This, here's the thing, yeah? yeah. I knew that Hamnet, Hamlet, I read yeah. the back and it was like son of a famous playwright. Mm. I was 70 pages in and I didn't realize they were on about Shakespeare's son. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, why am I meant to give a fuck about these people? <laughs> yeah, that's... And then someone I was talking to some, like one of my friends about it and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's about Shakespeare. And I was like, oh, ah. oh, right. Mm. I don't know why I didn't Changes your whole perspective. I was like, oh, great. Well, thanks. You've made Shakespeare even more boring. No offense, lady, who I'm sure you're a nice person. Um, I, mean, I was going to say, Ham are, you saying, are you saying Hamnet? So his son was called Hamnet and he made the play Hamlet. Mm. But isn't the play- Which one came first? Hamnet. Oh. And then he dies. Yeah. But that's already on the blurb, so I'm not spoiling anything. Like, he dies, and then Shakespeare makes this play called Hamlet to sort of, like, uh, immortalise his son's memory. But oh, wow. Isn't Hamlet a shithead, though? Is not is the... Hamlet the one where he has the... um? What happens in Hamlet? Which I, one's that? I've never you? actually read or seen it. I don't oh. know that one at all. Isn't it not the one where he, like, <laughs> kills his father? Me. Don't look at me. Kieran, because <laughs> wake up. <laughs> what, what's the plot of Hamlet? Isn't, isn't Hamlet the Lion King one? Yeah, the one where he kills his father or, or yeah. like his father dies and he kills no. his uncle or whatever. So the, how is... The, the uncle kills the father to take control and then okay. the father's ghost comes back and the son does something. So many ghosts in plays. The ghost of the king of Denmark tells his son Hamlet to avenge his murder by killing the new king. Okay, so how does that immortalise his child? Because that didn't happen in real life, did it? Or did it? What a load mm. of rubbish. Or did it? He's just making how, stuff up. How do we know? Shakespeare. Shakespeare wasn't a ghost. I could do it better. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry, Shakespeare. <laughs> Sorry, Shakespeare, I'm sure you're a nice person. <laughs> so the camera like, I hate Shakespeare. When are we going to admit to ourselves as a society, though, that Shakespeare is not that good? What? It's all right. He's got it's that, all yeah. right, you say, yeah. That's no, what I'm his, saying, it's his, all right. He's got that line where he says, watch you egg, and then, like, stabs <laughs> him. That's the, that's the best part, isn't it? <laughs> to yeah. be fair, like, Shakespeare was revolutionary for the time. Like, he made up so mm. many words and phrases and stuff that we just take for granted today. I can make up words made, and phrases. No, he made up the word uh, eyeball or no. vomit or puke or so. He made up some of those words. Tons, tons. Literally hundreds of words we have thanks to him. What words have you made up recently? Loads. Go on then. Name one. Um, scroggle. <laughs> what, what's a sh use it in a sentence. <laughs> um, the other day I had a scroggle. <laughs> Have you ever seen it's like a little bit of a tummy ache. <laughs> this is Tanetava. <laughs> Have you never seen the IT crowd? No. Where he's like, Tanetava, use it in a sentence. Good morning, that's a nice Tanetava. And, <laughs> and then he wins the countdown, because he's on countdown. Yeah. And he wins the countdown, um, like, teapot set. Oh. Rich Iowardi. That's mm. a book I like. Iowardi on Iowardi, where he's interviewing himself Ooh. for this book. And it's so mm. funny. He's unmatched. He's so unattainably funny my he threatens me <laughs> okay. my sister hates him like with a natural passion what? and i have no idea why and she's like 
just don't like him. I'm like, no, explain this. Explain in detail. I'm taking this personally. <laughs> I'm sure she's not a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's You're going to get a message like, why have you done this? There's people outside my house. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on to the final? No. First, before we do, we have to say what book oh, we're going to yeah, read. Yeah, because we were talking about books and the book club. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be reading first... Um, they Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. It looks like this, if anyone can see that. <laughs> yeah, people maybe. on TikTok like it, so I don't have eye opes. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? TikTok is a profound place of culture and... God, this generation. You're dumping. too young. <laughs> I'm just being ages. Yeah. <laughs> All that aside. TikTok, all yeah. like crap. No, because it's actually they, the best platform ever. They suggested We Were Liars. Because yeah. I did that TikTok most recommended books yeah. thing. Mm. We Were Liars was such pretentious nonsense. Ugh. I was going to read that, but I didn't. Absolutely trash. You're not mm. hear me dismantling <laughs> it, having to go at it. Oh, it was, I mean, there was, a, the, like, there was a twist at the end. Yeah. So the whole plot was based upon there being a twist at the end, mm. which it, the twist was just a plot device. Do you know what I mean? There was no real yeah. point to the story other than the author clearly set out to say, oh, I have a twist yeah. and then it'll make you reread. And it does make it slightly better, mm. but it's not worth the 200 odd pages leading up to it. Okay. Because mm. it's dull mm. and contrived and boring. Mm. And the, main, the, the, the the narrative from the main character is very um pretentious. Okay. So yeah, I won't be able to get past that. Yeah, don't bother with that. But okay. we were liars. What is that about? That, I mean, we're gonna is, find out. Is, yeah. But... So they both die at the end. I think, like from my knowledge, this might be completely inaccurate. It's set in a world where people, I think maybe on like, like their eighteenth birthday or something, they find out the exact moment they're gonna die. So I don't I think, think I want to read this now. <laughs> I think it's about two, maybe two boys <laughs> who have like the same death time and they meet. Ooh. That could be wrong. That could be wrong. Is but it, do they k- kill each other? Do they die together? Is this a Romeo and Juliet knows? situation? Who knows? Is but this that's, just Romeo that's and what Juliet? I'm you guys. Maybe. Pretty today. much everything is Romeo and Juliet, yeah. isn't it? Have you ever watched Logan's Run? No, but mm. that name sounds familiar. Because mm, it's uh, old school dystopia where they live in this society underground or mm. wherever where they can just do what they want, but they oh, uh, they get this. killed mm-hmm. when they turn thirty. Oh, and then okay. He, that Logan escapes, but mm. the guy who played Logan, who's a very famous, we should actor, introduce that. <laughs> really? No, I'm obviously oh. joking. <laughs> the guy who, the guy who <laughs> played <laughs> Logan. Like Start counting your days. <laughs> Christ. No, I know because right, the guy who plays Logan, I swear he looks like an actual adult. Mm. I don't know if he was 30 when they made it, but he's meant to be a 30 yeah. year old. And you know, I've got several years until I'm 30, but I don't feel like I look like an adult. But he looks like an adult adult. I keep seeing people who are like 22 and they look like oh, way older than mm. me. I feel like I don't I don't think I look grown up. I don't feel grown up. No. But I, like the lines around my eyes are saying something different, but I don't feel grown up. Mm. I have a new favorite bar in Leeds that ID me every time I go in and it makes me feel really youthful. You simply do that Love for the that. validation. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have another vodka, please. And like, do you have ID for that? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I hate it when no, uh, you're at the self service and they come over and they just tap obviously. the button. It's like obviously over <laughs> yeah. 25. It's like okay, buddy, <laughs> all right. It, it's not just obviously. It's obviously looks over yeah. 25. You're like, yeah. Do I? <laughs> and they they look at you and they're like, yeah. <laughs> I once got ID'd um, for buying paracetamol. You have to be about 16 to buy oh, paracetamol. Yeah. And I didn't have any ID and I had a wanging hangover and I was fuming. I was like, this lady, I'm clearly, I'm clearly, I don't know, probably like, hmm, when was I last hungover? Maybe 24, 25. I was like, I'm clearly yeah. like not 16. Mm. Look, those are 16 year olds out there. You see those little, little prepubescent yeah. people? They're 16 uh-huh. year olds. And then she was like, it's policy. And I was like, you're nothing more than a cog in the system. <laughs> yeah, I, said, I said all of this in my head. And I was furious. It's time to rage against the oh. machine. Just let me buy the paracetamol. <laughs> I, I had that with ibuprofen. And I had like my wisdom tooth teeth coming through and I was in so much pain and when she mm. wouldn't serve them to me I just like ended up crying and I sat on the floor and I cried and the security guard came over he's like are you okay what happened and I told him everything he went 
come with me. I'm buying you the ibuprofen. And he marched me back into Sainsbury's and he was like, who served you? I was like, it was her. And he took me to that till and he bought me ibuprofen. She did it, sir. <laughs> I was like, you're not making me seem like an adult here, are you? He was like, it's okay, I've got your back. Uh, uh, excuse me, I'd like to buy this child some ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> I love a nice security guard. One yeah. time when I was at my, I don't know, I think I was at my dad's and I just got drunk by myself. Mm. I mean, we shared a glass of wine and then he fell asleep because he's old. Um, mm. And I just decided to keep on going. I would party by myself with me and my dog at yeah. my dad's. So I went to like the 24 hour Tesco's, but they weren't serving, um, they weren't selling cigarettes. Okay. after i think it was after 11 or whatever okay. so i was like are you joking i really need a cigarette and the security guard who's really nice he was like i've got rollies and he let me roll a bunch so i was like i'm gonna need these because i'm gonna get really drunk <laughs> have a nice oh, security what, what a great guy that's yeah it's nice isn't it buddy if you're out there <laughs> thank you props to mm. you thank you for i don't smoke anymore yeah mm. <laughs> Some guy's going to be in the comments now like, that was me. <laughs> Good for you. I'll send you a fiver on paper. <laughs> Don't say that. Now they're all going to be coming. Do you know what's actually quite difficult about rewatching Sex and City? Mm. Carrie is always smoking. That's oh. quite difficult to watch. Okay. Because it, it, it makes you want to smoke or because you're like judging her a bit? Mm. No, because I want to smoke so bad. Mm. So I, just, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. If I do, I have like one every two months or sure. probably not mm. even that, mm. you know, just once in a while. But that, that's quite difficult. Like it's a... I thought she was meant to be like really into her fashion and stuff though and her clothes. This was a 90s like... thing. So they're oh, all... Oh, imagine how she must have stunk though. All those like designer clothes just smelling of like smoke. Mm. That's what I have to remember. Oh. But the problem is, is I like the smell of smoke. <laughs> I've always I've always liked the smell of smoke. Okay. Cigarette it's, smoke in particular. Yeah. It's That's strange. Because I grew up with both my parents smoking in the house. It mm. was just disgusting and I hated it. Yeah, yeah. And everything I owned stunk. And I got made fun of in school for just smelling of stale smoke. And Ooh. it got to the point like where when I moved out at 18, I literally just ended up throwing everything out and slowly buying new clothes again. Because mm. mm. everything just stunk. And no matter how many times you washed it, you couldn't get it, it out. It is really hard to get the smell yeah. of smoke out, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Nicotine hits me harder than anything. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'll like have a few puffs of like a rolly or something and I'm, I'm lightheaded. I need to sit down. <laughs> I feel sick. My head is spinning. Oh, I like that though. That's why, you know, I'll have one every few mm. months because that really, really hits the spot. But a yeah. proper cigarette, not a rolly. It doesn't do the same thing for me. All right. Sorry, mate. Because, uh, you know, rollies were like, shot the. Oh, no, I shouldn't rollies say are this. For pussies. Do you want to know the worst thing I ever did? Go on. The worst thing you ever did? Yeah, not ever. I'll sit up. I'll not sit ever, up not that. ever. Yeah. Actually, there's two things that come to mind and we'll end on this because we've only got a few minutes. <laughs> so um, one time, like when I was a teenager, I smoked weed and stuff like quite a lot because I just loved smoking weed. Oh my God. Um, do, but would you ever do this? Would you ever do this? Like, no, if you never smoke weed. weed. Not, not you. <laughs> <laughs> would I ever smoke weed? No, would you ever have done, did you smoke weed as a teenager? No. Okay. Well, sometimes when you're a teenager and you've got these honest. smoking habits, like I'd smoke cigarettes and I'd smoke weed and mm. I'd steal cigarettes from people and I'd hide them in my room or whatever. It okay. must have been like the world's worst kept secret. <laughs> like it's pretty fucking obvious. Smoke outside my window like yeah. I'm falling. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one time I had like a bunch of weed and I had no... The, the eternal <laughs> battle when you have smoking habits is yeah. having enough paraphernalia, having your Rizzlers and your... It's well, a you, lot of equipment. Your Rizzlers and yeah. your, well, you can make roaches. Mm. So you tear off a bit of cardboard, roll up, make a roach if you don't have any actual filters. Yeah. I didn't have any Rizzlers one time. So I um, emptied a can of Coke and poked holes in the can of Coke oh and gosh. put the weed on top bomb. and smoked <laughs> the weed for a can. You're probably inhaling paint because it's a <laughs> <laughs> like that coke flavor hit different a, di a dirty bomb <laughs> yeah but the worst thing i ever done was when i was really really jones in for like you know so i wasn't old enough to go to the shops because when mm. i started smoking they introduced the you have to be mm. 18 and i was probably about 16 or 17 mm. and <laughs> once i and i didn't have any anything at all and no one was around in the facility to give me a rolly so i tried to i took apart a tea bag Got the bits of tea out of tea bag, uh, made a little roach with mm. a bit of cardboard, got a receipt from Boots, mm. and tried to make the world's worst That cigarette. is the, like, scabbiest oh, roll. Yes, no, and, no, I remember it the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. What the fuck? Because, like, the thing is, is receipts don't mm. like them because they will just go up. Mm. So I'm trying to, like, and it's, like, 
Oh, yeah. trying to smoke a tea bag with a receipt. <laughs> and that is one of the worst things I've done. And life. that's now on record. <laughs> but you know what, actually, that reminds me. Did you know you can smoke tea? Really? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Actually, a friend of mine, when they make joints, they use chamomile in their joints instead of tobacco. To help them sleep is, easier. Is that, like, relaxing? Yeah, I imagine better? it's relaxing for them, yeah. Once someone at a party mm. I was at, they were smoking the joint and they'd put, like, someone had put either, and this was a teenage party, by the way, mm. they'd put either, like, coke. I think they'd put cocaine in the joint. It's like, that's, what? Yeah, like, that's not what you want to do. That's not going to do anything, yeah. surely. Or, no, was, you don't or maybe they'd put MDMA. Like, just, what? Yeah, got... yeah, yeah. On that note, I think we should end <laughs> because Kes Motion's falling asleep. <laughs> he's he's had a he's had a hard few days. We we he went out partying. Like, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> the Earth says hello. We're actually that boring. <laughs> you missed my story about trying to smoke a tea bag or a receipt. Yeah, no, it was horrible. It's a core memory. Yeah. That's all for today's episode. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you follow us on iTunes and Spotify and all that and follow this channel. Check out Rachel's channel. Just check out Kieran's Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be content incoming, hopefully. Amazing. Yeah. And we'll do this again in a month's mm. time. We'll see you all then. And we encourage you to read with us. They for both the die club. at the end. Yeah. Read and, it with and us. watch EastEnders so we can do a recap. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.